The following is a presentation of the Vol Network. Closed captioning provided by the University of Tennessee full-time MBA program. Learn, transform, lead. It all starts here. This is Tennessee football and the beginning of the Butch Jones era. I want the whole city of Knoxville to know that it's football time in Tennessee. For the next 60 minutes, you're tuned to the Fall Network, documenting the most storied program in college football. Welcome to the Butch Jones Show, hosted by Tennessee head football coach Butch Jones and the Vol Network's Bob Kessling. Brought to you by the one bank that backs the big orange like no other. First Tennessee, the official bank of the balls. By your local Ford dealer. Go further on a Tennessee Saturday. Visit your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsors of UT football. By Dish. Proud to be an official sponsor of the Big Orange. Catch the balls on Dish. And by Farm Bureau Insurance. With agents in more communities than any other insurer, Tennessee turns to Farm Bureau Insurance, the official insurance of the balls. Now, the Butch Jones Show. Sporting the smoky gray jerseys, Tennessee players did indeed give their all for Tennessee on a Saturday afternoon against Georgia. It was a game that went to overtime. Coach, your team showed fight, determination, a lot of pride. Well, we did, and, and I said it in the post-game press conference, is extremely proud of every player in our football family, proud of everyone. We talked about having to be one Tennessee, playing complimentary football, but everyone coming together, our fan base, we made Neyland Stadium electric. It was a great home field advantage, and uh, one play away, one play away from a great win, but we have to build on it, move on, and continue to get better. But again, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, just a tremendous electric environment. Uh, great prospective student athletes in attendance, everyone. It was a great night. We just finished one play short. Second half was quite a comeback by Tennessee, and again, you fought them right to the very end. Well, going into halftime, uh, we were very confident, and we knew we just need to make some plays. And, uh, you know, we feel we're the best conditioned football team in America, and our kids are starting to believe that. And I knew that we were going to have a great second half just by their demeanor in the locker room. Three times you went forward on fourth down in the second half, twice, twice deep in your own territory. Walk us through that, and it just seemed to energize the entire team. Well, that's not the norm. But, uh, you know, I felt that we needed, we had gained some momentum, and uh, we needed to maintain that momentum. You know, and we wanted to keep Georgia's offense on the bench. And, and everything is a tribute to our coaching staff, the right calls, but also our players. You know, we had executed those plays in practice. And when you execute those plays in practice, you have tremendous confidence and trust in your players to really make sure that we, you know, when we call that play, that, that you know, it's going to be uh, performed like it needs to be. And it was a way to show our players, too, that, hey, we believe in you. We have the best offensive line in the conference. Justin Worley was performing well. And uh, so, again, our players showed great confidence, and they executed the game plan. Your team took a big step because you fought one of the top teams in the country right to the end, and that's, that's one of those big steps that you've been looking for in your football program. It is. You know, unfortunately, now we have to finish those. You know, again, we're one play away, you know, from having a big win because it's win number four, and it gets us one step closer to our first goal of bowl eligibility. But, again, I can see this team growing. You know, in the locker room after the game, I saw leadership. You know, I saw uh, hurt. You know, now we have to learn how to manufacture that hurt and coming back this week and this bye week, becoming a much better football team. But I love our players. Uh, I think that's proof that what we do works. Now we just have to continue to develop, recruit, and stay the course. 
Big time game, big time atmosphere at Neyland Stadium. We'll show you highlights from Tennessee and Georgia next here on the Butch Jones Show. Our Adidas Ball Scholar of the Week is Joshua Dobbs. The freshman quarterback from Alpharetta, Georgia, majors in aerospace engineering and has been admitted to the Chancellor's Honors Program. Since I was little, I've always been interested in math. Math and science have always been my favorite subjects. And I've also always had an interest for airplanes. The Honors Program was really just the perfect fit in order just to take more strenuous classes and then also be able to play football. Josh is ready to take on the challenge of playing major college football and completing a rigorous academic plan. Over this past semester, I've really just learned how to stay ahead on my schoolwork in order to, so I can put in the time I want to off the field in football, in the film room, and also just working on my skill at the quarterback position. So it's really just taught me to manage my time wisely in order to be the best I can be on and off the field. Congratulations to Joshua Dobbs, our Adidas Ball Scholar of the Week. Sell out crowd at Neyland Stadium, 102-455. You preached to that to the Tennessee fans. They responded. They responded, and again, great home field advantage, sold out student section, and uh, we're going to continue to need that as we move forward with South Carolina coming here in, in a couple weeks. But just electric, and again, it proves that we have the best fan base in the country. You knew, though, going up against Georgia, they got one of the great quarterbacks in the history of the SEC, and slowing him down was going to be a key. It was going to be a key, and I believe he had less than 200 yards throwing the football, which is a tribute uh, to our defense. And, you know, our fans had a lot to do with that. There was times where you couldn't hear a thing. And so, again, uh, you know, we knew they were very explosive. It would be a great challenge for us. But you out-hit Georgia defensively and, and knocked a couple of their key players out of the game, and that was a key in the game. Well, that's the thing we talk about in building this football program is being a blue-collar football team and taking pride in the way we play, you know, in our physicality, and it starts in practice. And although, you know, we had to alter our practice schedule this week, even when we practice in vest, our kids still maintain a level of physicality, intensity, body position again you know there's no there's no uh you know there's always a reason why you perform well on game day and it's usually a byproduct of practicing well during the course of the week and we had our best week of preparation let's pick up highlights from neyland stadium georgia had jumped out early in the contest and led by a score of 10 nothing but tennessee comes back well this is a play action pass and uh the great thing about this is justin actually gets to a second read in the progression and finds alton howard for a big 20 yard game. Howard was very much a key in this game from that slot position. He was and we really challenged him and we wanted to try to manufacture as many ways as possible for him to touch the football and he performed exceptionally well and then here's Mike Pilardi. What can I say about Mike Pilardi? Best thing I could probably say is consistency and performance. So it's 10 to 3 Georgia leads and the Bulldogs have the ball. This is midway in the second quarter. It's a big third and one stop and you know, does a great job of creating fourth and four. And then, you know, this is the way coming up. This is the way the ball bounces at times. And, you know, we do a great job. We actually deflect the ball coming up here. And uh, actually, it makes the ball right on target. If this ball isn't deflected, it's an incomplete pass. And we're off the field. But again, it's playing hard. And, you know, sometimes, you know, these things happen in the game of football. And then Aaron Murray on the slant pass, and it's 17 to 3 Georgia. Now we pick up action in the third quarter. Well, again, you know, Alton Howard, again, a big, big uh, play for us, 33 yard gain. And again, this is a play action pass. And uh, the great thing about it is the run after the catch makes a few defenders miss and getting the extra rack yards that we talk about. Howard had four catches for 70 yards in the game, and this is one of Justin Worley's best throws of the day. And great play by Marquez North, true freshman, stepping up in a big time game. And we call this dot in the eye and uh, does a great job of getting the feet in bounce and hanging on to the football because it's different. The ground can't cause a fumble, but the ground can cause an incomplete pass. So you have to finish the catch. You have to secure the catch and just a tremendous play by the true freshman. Just got those toes down in time and the officials reviewed it. Said it's a touchdown, and now the Tennessee sideline's alive at 17 to 10. Well, again, you could feel the momentum starting to swing a little bit. And uh, now these are plays, you know, moving forward. Justin does a great job of breaking and driving on the football. But now we've got to come up with those interceptions. Then another true freshman coming off the edge, Corey Vereen, you know, giving us a spark on the edge of our defense. And you can see, Bob, his first step, and he does a great job of really reducing his surface, making himself skinny, and then uh, having the sack. So Georgia has to punt the football. 
Well, Actually, this, 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 this is, is us Pilardi. playing the That's, football. I'm sorry. And, and this has been Michael Pilardi all year long. And then I thought our kick coverage was outstanding. And that's hidden yardage. That's field position and uh, zero yards after the catch. Got ahead of myself. This is when Georgia has the ball again and Tennessee's defense steps up one more time. Again, we started to control the line of scrimmage and that was evident. And uh, again, we created for Georgia, we created third and long situations and I thought A.J. Johnson was very active. Here's the, the play you just alluded to, the pump block. We felt very confident going into the game. We challenged our punt rush team that we could get a block. And again, there's two two freshmen, Bob making a play. Jalen Reeves Maven does a great job. And then Devon Swafford uh, picking the ball up and scoring. And then you can see uh, Gerald, uh, Geraldo Orta also has a great block there. That's his second touchdown. Interception for return and now the block punt for a touchdown at 17 all. Well again, you know here, uh, never say die. We give up the touchdown. It's 24-17 at this point in time. Now we come to a critical fourth and one and we just felt we had a great play call and we needed to seize the momentum and fourth and one. It's a flip play to Rajon Neal. And I tell you what, I can't say enough about Rajon Neal going to this game. We had zero depth at the running back position. Again, 28 carries. I believe he had 27 the previous week playing injured and uh, just can't say enough about his resiliency and his toughness. 148 yards for Rajon Neal. And then he finishes the drive off uh, to make it 24 24. Georgia gets the ball back and the Bulldogs led by Aaron Murray come up again with another drive but this is a short yardage play stuffed by Daniel McCullers. Yep, Daniel McCullers controlled the interior and again we challenged him all week long that he needed to control and then here's another uh, fourth down and one we just run power and uh, Ray John does a great job of getting the first down and then coming up you know it's now what you do with it it's third and long and you're kind of seeing a, a similar situation here. Another true freshman steps up in a critical moment, third and 10, Josh Smith. And I thought Justin Worley again did a great job of hanging in the pocket and then staying on cue, Bob. Another true freshman, fourth and one. Uh, A.J. Branisell, great play call, great execution. So Tennessee taking the ball down in a 24-all tie. And Worley again, a good throw on target. Well, again, fourth and one critical players making critical plays in critical situations. And then second goal uh, at the seven, uh, we get the ball in untouched. It's 31 24. And now, Bob, we got it. We got to close the game out. You know, there's a minute and 50 some odd seconds left. They have one timeout. And, uh, you know, we come down and again, you know, players trying to make plays. Uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. Uh, with that with that call, but uh, you know puts him on the first and goal on the two yard line. Justin Coleman trying to make a play and now it's third and goal and Murray. You know great players make great plays a great quarterback uh, great accuracy with the ball, but uh, again we get the overtime and uh, big play big play right here uh, first down and uh, you know Next play, we've all seen this a million times. Alton Howard giving tremendous effort, and this is just an effort play, Bob. Yeah, he's got to put two hands on the ball and extend it, but again, it's an individual giving his all for Tennessee trying to make a play, and unfortunately, uh, the ball slips out of his hands and goes through the end zone, and it's by rule, it's a touchback. It was reviewed, called a touchdown on the field, but they reviewed it and said it was a touchback, and so now Georgia gets the ball for its shot in overtime. Again, I thought our defense did a great job of creating some negative yardage plays and uh, forcing them you know, to be able to have to kick a 42-yard field goal, which is a long field goal. And again, uh, great pass coverage, great up front, uh, you know, but uh, they made the play that they needed to, to win, to win the game. And it's unfortunate, you know, it's players giving their all and uh, we grow from it and we move on. Your team in the locker room, you, you mentioned to me after the game, you saw the emotion they were spent. There were shots of the players walking off the field in tears. I mean, they laid it on the line for, for Tennessee, and I know you're very thrilled with that aspect of the game. They did. You know, what we can't allow to have happen is have Georgia beat us twice. You know what? We have to learn from it. We have to move on. We should have tremendous confidence that was grown and built. But 
I guess the thing for me was the setting after the locker room is before I even said anything, I had some seniors step up and say what they needed to say about staying together. They can see the progress that they're making and they're starting to believe in themselves. They're starting to believe in our style of play and we're going to be different. And you can see, Bob, we're going to be different in terms of the way we play our effort our energy, our intensity, and they're starting to believe in that process. And I'm extremely proud of these kids. We'll come back and take a look at one of the leaders on this team, Senator James Stone, in just a moment here on the Butch Jones Show. Without a snap, there is no play. But with each play comes necessary communication. Communication for the offensive line is very important. And you know, it all starts with James. He gets every call started on every play, whether it's a pass or a run. And uh, that's what we live by. If we're not all five on the same page, you know, something bad can happen. Anytime somebody assumes something, that's usually when we get into trouble because we've been playing with each other sometimes for a long time. You kind of assume, like, all right, he gets that. And just it's like it's time to just go back to the basics and make sure everybody's communicating and just continue to focus on our fundamentals. It helps just to know you know you got another guy down there, another guy that's been through it, another guy that's a great player, and uh, that can help our team. And you know he'll help with communication as a center, and you know he'll help definitely communicating back and forth with Worley and protection. Butch Jones's offensive system requires his linemen to be mobile, an easy adjustment for senior James Stone. And this new offensive coach Jones, he's called the gas pedal, you know, because he sets the tempo. I think that's it, just the conditioning level. It's just you have to keep going, and it's times where you, you really can't slow down because if you try to slow down to, to catch your breath, it really hurts the offense and it, it defeats the purpose of running a high, fast paced tempo. You know, we're big 300 pound guys, and we're not used to moving that fast, you know, in previous offenses, but I feel like it's to our advantage, and James does a good job, you know, to be in that gas pedal, making sure we all get lined up. An offensive lineman's biggest thrill is watching his running back in the open field. 13 out to the 40. Worley this time will hand off to the tailback, making some moves and making a good run down the near sideline. Race on the end of the 30 to the 20 to the 15 to the 10 and out of bounds inside the 10 down to the 8 yard line. And you really don't know where the running back is. You just know where it's supposed to hit based on the design of the play. Trying to look to where you think it's going to hit. And then you hear the crowd most of the time at a home game before you really see the running back. And once you hear the crowd looking, you kind of looking, you're playing and running downfield. That's just a great feeling. Your running back is a reflection of you as well as you are a reflection of the running back. So when one of us doesn't do well, it hurts the other. And it just feels great to see our running backs go out there. We really want to go out there and create some space for those boys to work because they're talented. Like I just see the potential in this team to come and play as a single unit. And that's something I really want to be a part of. James Stone, the center of Tennessee's offensive attack. For the Butch Jones Show, I'm Rick Russo. You know, the center is kind of the captain of that offensive line. you got to have a good, solid player there, and Stone indeed is that. Juwan James said it. He's the gas pedal. We call him the gas pedal because he sets the temperament of the offensive line in terms of getting lined up fast, making all the, the calls up front, and there's so much that goes into playing offensive line. And the big thing we want to do up front is make the defensive line uncomfortable. You know, we, we don't want to have the defensive linemen, you know, a lot of them have a rhythm that they get into of getting down in their three-point stances. And that's part of playing, you know, with the tempo, which we want to play with is kind of take their edge away from them. So he's the gas pedal, extremely consistent, Bright, intelligent young man, love everything about James Stone. You know, the one thing about it, too, when the center gets there, he's got to find out where the middle linebacker is, where all the other guys are, and make quick calls, and he has to do it just like that. Well, that, and on top of it is, when he follows the play, he's going to where the ball is going to be spotted. So he has to know a little bit, too, about refereeing in terms of where were they spot the ball, if the ball's tackled outside the numbers. And so, again, that's why he's the gas pedal. He sets the temperament. And uh, he's a great leader, and he's playing like a senior should play. James Stone, the leader of the Tennessee offensive line. Now let's get a look at social media with Sarah Mitchell. It's time to show off some of the most eye-catching posts in social media this week. To open up SEC play at home, our Vol fans came out strong wearing lots of orange and white, and some had on the newest Tennessee feature, Smokey Gray. To start us off, 
Reed Reynolds sent this picture to our Vol Twitter to show off the new gray jerseys that these guys wore to cheer on the volunteers. Rebecca and her friend pose in their game day jerseys, rallying behind Marquez North and Justin Worley. Tennessee has a unique fan following, including those with four legs and a tail. Glenn Marlin posted this picture of Dixie practicing the serious smoky stare in her UT collar. King of Twitter, Jawan James, posted this video capturing some post-practice action from Vol's assistant equipment manager, Alan Sitzler, commonly known as Hawk. It was so loud in Neyland Stadium yesterday that ESPN even tweeted about it. And musician Charlie Daniels tweeted this message. Regardless of the outcome of this game, I feel like I've seen the turnaround of the University of Tennessee football program this afternoon. That's all for this installment of Vol Media Mash. Tennessee has a bye week next week, so we'll catch up with you the following week. Don't go away. The Butch Jones Show will be right back with the quarterback Bergdorf up under the center. And Bergdorf is blasted, fumbles the football. There's a scramble for it at the 24-yard line. Who has recovered the ball? The big orange, Bill Duff. And somebody just lowered the boom as Bergdorf came out on the option, and it was Leonard Little who just cracked him. Yeah, he popped him as soon as he came away from the center, Johnny. I mean, he had his headgear right in there on his chest in the ball and it just popped loose big play great opportunity for the ball our first year beating alabama in alabama and for us to go to, to beat them i don't know what it was 45 to 14 was a big turning moment in that series for that time so i think that was one of my best memories one of my best memories There's a lot of good memories but that's one of my best memories i had the biggest thing was like a family experience you know the guys uh that i played with we're gonna be brothers for the rest of our life because we had a bond that they can't be broken, and it's like we were playing with a bunch of brothers, so I miss that aspect of it, and I miss the fans also, because Tennessee has the best fans in the whole United States. I think it's more special now than anything else, but now as I look back at it, uh, it was a special time, and it was also a special time for fans, too. And um, right now, I think we have the guy to get us back to that point. You know, Coach Jones is a, a blue-collar guy. He's a fast-paced guy. He's a, he's a football coach. And um, he's going to get this university back to where we need to go. Leonard Little, he was a legend of the game also on Saturday. It's great to have number one back in the house. Great. You know, we talk about Vol for life, and it's not just something that we use in recruiting. It really means everything, Vol for life. That's what our football program is based off of. And Leonard was one of the first individuals I had the distinct opportunity to meet when I came here. And uh, we've kind of forged a great relationship and uh, I could sit here all day and watch highlights of him. You know, Leonard was an unbelievable player because he was a defensive end, then they moved him to linebacker, and even asked him to play middle linebacker, and all he said, I'll do whatever it takes to get this team to win. Well, again, you can see the pride that he has in this football program. He talked about a brotherhood and a family and, you know, living those moments the rest of your life, and that's what it is of playing football at Tennessee, and he played 12 years in the National Football League, and I think it's a great illustration to our players of having him back, and I think that's one of the advantages of being at the University of Tennessee is all the great resources that you've had and all the great former players and Leonard Little is in that uh, scope of magnitude in which surrounds our football program. It was great to have Leonard Little back at Elon Stadium on Saturday. When we come back, we'll ask the coach here on the Butch Jones Show. Time out to check the stats. Brought to you by Dick. The Tennessee Volunteer Football Program has been a pipeline to the NFL since the dawn of professional football. 323 former Vols have put on an NFL jersey, with 34 Vols currently on an NFL roster. Check the stats. Through week four of the current season, former Vols have been a part of more touchdowns in the NFL than any other college team's alumni. At 29 touchdowns, former Vols have outpaced the alums from other schools by 12 or more TDs. Peyton Manning alone has a record-setting 16 TDs. Check the stat. Only from this do you get the Hopper Whole Home HD DVR. Learn more at thisvols.com. Catch the Vols on this, official sponsor of The Big Orange. 
It's time now for Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Currently serving ball fans with eight Tennessee locations and online 24-7 at academy.com. Coach, first question from Blake Flat. How do you talk to your team after such a loss? Well, you know, they understand always because I'm very transparent and I told them I'm very proud of them and moving forward. And this is what we have to do now to really continue to improve. But they're smart individuals. They can see the progress. They understand when you have a great week of preparation and you have the mental effort, the mental intensity to compete on every down. You know, we're going to give ourselves an opportunity to win football games and we have a lot of wins ahead of us. Next question comes from James Loughran. Uh, after the great game pick Howard had, how do you get him more touches going forward? Well, we'll continue to manufacture more touches for him. And, you know, I think the byproduct of him playing well as I get back to that constant theme, he had a great week of preparation. And, uh, you know, he's given great effort. He's now understanding what it takes to play that position, the details. You know, you line up a yard too, too much outside on your split, you know, your split rules, the small details. And was exceptionally proud of him with his effort, and he is one of our playmakers, and we'll continue to manufacture ways to get him the football. Halfway point of the season, you got an open date. Does that come at a good time for your team? It's coming at a, right, right at the right time, very appropriately in terms of the time frame of where we're at. And uh, it's not an off week. It's a bye week. And so there's a lot of things. We first start, we have to have fundamental improvement. We'll improve uh, everything about our football team, our youth development. We'll prepare for South Carolina. We'll get healthy, and then we'll hit the road recruiting as well. Coach, we'll see you in two weeks against South Carolina. Look forward to it. Comments from Tennessee coach Butch Jones. When we come back, we'll talk with Tennessee offensive coordinator Mike Bajakian here on the Butch Jones Show. Time now for the Tennessee Top 5, brought to you by Hyundai. Four-man front for Tennessee. Murray back to throw. Being hit and sacked back at the 36-yard line. It was Corey Vereen. Worley waits for the snap. He's going to try his tailback, and his tailback's going to get it. Rajon Neal dives over right guard. He didn't get it by much, but he picks up a big first down, and Tennessee keeps the drive alive. Hit it as hard as I could, and, and really, man, you couldn't be denied. And uh, one thing our coach, uh, I think, kind of preached to us is kind of make make the guys wrong. I mean, make the guys right. You know, when I, when they're wrong, because majority of the time they're right, helping us out. Snaps it, hand off Neal up the middle of the five to the checkerboards. Touchdown, Rayshon Neal. I mean, all the credit really goes to those guys, man, because. As the game wore on, man, they kept pushing, they kept pushing, we kept falling for it, we kept hitting it up in there. And you gotta give love to the to the coaching staff for even letting us, letting us touch it and run it that many times. Worley back to throw. Sets up, got some time, fires for the end zone. Man there, caught, and he's staying bounds. Yes! Touchdown, Tennessee! Marquez North! We got a funky look by the defense. Um, one you don't normally see every day. They brought a lot of pressure. We had a, a max protection to, to pick it up. And they, uh, they did a great job protecting me. And their safety was kind of flying over the top, so I had to put it back short. He made a great catch on it. Here they come. Barbers has they it blocked. It. They blocked Tennessee it. blocks the punt. It's picked up at the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Tennessee. Devon Swafford picks up the punt and goes in for the score. And Tennessee's down by one. We had we had been scheming all week, you know, uh, knew we could get in there and get one. You know, Coach Jones called the block point, he called the play for it. And, you know, the guys made it happen. Top five plays from the Tennessee Georgia game. Joined by John Bryce from VolQuest.com and also joined by Tennessee offensive coordinator Mike Bajakian. Mike, uh, I know that you're not happy the fact you didn't win the game, but what an effort by the football team and what a good day for the Tennessee offense, especially in the second half. Sure, you know, we, we preach about playing 60 minutes and overcoming adversity. And, and while it wasn't the outcome we, we would, would have liked, it was definitely a 60-plus minute effort. And we take strides. You know, Coach talks about 
the process of becoming champions, and, and this was part of the process. You know, next week, next year, the, these are games we have to win. How big was that game yesterday in terms of building for the future, moving forward and turning some quarters and continuing to establish the, the identity that you guys have been working towards? It, it was big, and it, it starts, as always, up front with our offensive line. And those guys, uh, Juwan James got up in front of the unit on Thursday and said, hey, this is, this is a matter of belief. You know, and, and, and they, they felt from the start that we were going to go in and win. And um, that belief is, is an inherent part of, of, of becoming a championship program. One thing I think people talk about for a long time, Tennessee went for it three times on fourth down, made all three, two of those deep in Tennessee territory. As a play caller, how do you prepare for those situations? Because you just can't spin the wheel and pick one play out. You've got to have that on a sheet. So talk about the preparations for being ready for that. Sure. It starts earlier in the week. We game plan short yardage on, on Wednesday morning, and, and Don Mahoney is in charge of that process and he came in with a great plan and it, it was something that from from Wednesday to, to practice at Wednesday morning uh, and, and, and Thursday afternoon in practice we felt confident that, that we would be able to execute those calls that confidence Mike what are the intangible benefits moving forward not only just because you executed and converted them but simply going for it and showing the, the team and the players the belief that you guys have in them it's part of the process and, and that's exactly it. It, it it's confidence it builds confidence as, as we go forth and and it lets those guys know that, that we as coaches have confidence in their ability to execute. You know, the first one, it was at the 34-yard line, and it's, you sent the punt team out first, and all of a sudden the entire offensive line goes down to Coach Jones and say, let's go for it. That's got to give everybody confidence. Sure, you know, and, and it starts way back when in the spring and into training camp. Uh, those guys have had a great attitude, and, and we preach a, a mentality of physicality, and it starts up front, and, and, and they give me the confidence to call that play. We're with Tennessee Offensive Coordinator Mike Bajakin and back in a moment here on the Butch Jones Show. It's time to announce the AutoZone player of the game. Get in the zone, AutoZone. In the zone for Tennessee was Justin Worley. The junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina, was 17 for 31 passing for 215 yards and a touchdown. Congratulations to Justin Worley, our AutoZone player of the game. AutoZone, proud sponsor of the Vols. Parts are just part of what they do. We're back with Tennessee Offensive Coordinator Mike Bajaki. And Coach Jake, everybody on the staff has a relationship with Butch Jones, it seems like. What's your relationship and how far do you guys go back? Boy, it goes back to 2002, 2003. I was a graduate assistant at the University of Michigan, and uh, Coach was the offense coordinator at Central Michigan University, and they hired me to come be the quarterback coach, and that's where it started. We shared an office as assistants together, coached there for two years, went our separate ways for three years, and then when he got the head coaching job at Central Michigan, he asked me to come back to be his offense coordinator. Mike, you've been through a lot of battles with Butch. I think you've coached games the, the day after you've had to have IVs the night before. You were so sick. You've been on crutches, things like that. What are the benefits when you have that sort of deep relationship with the coach as you go through the rigors of a season? You know, the communication, it, it's almost nonverbal. You know, for example, going into the fourth quarter there, we had third and five and plus territory, and I knew what he was thinking. I knew he, it was two down territory, uh, which allowed us to go for the last fourth and one conversion. and. and it was the process of calling the play. I checked from a pass to a run, knowing that he was going to give me that fourth down opportunity to get the first if we needed to. Justin Worley seemed to really grow up in the second half, especially against Georgia. But you've kind of seen this. Now he has confidence in his wide receivers because they made a lot of good plays for him against Georgia. They made Georgia. great plays. And, and uh, we, we talk a lot about making, making the spectacular catch, breaking tackles, making people miss. No matter what position you play at the skill positions, we want to get more than what the play is designed for. And, and that allows the quarterback a little bit more margin for error with ball location and accuracy when a guy like Marquez North can make a diving catch out of the end zone. What kind of strides did you take as an entire offense Saturday towards adapting the identity that you want for this team, both mentally and physically on the field? Well, again, we, we talk about making conditioning a factor in, in the football game and, and playing at a high level of physicality. I'm, I'm sure Georgia went home on the plane last night and they, they felt the physicality of the football game. And, and our guys are, are continuing, again, the process of becoming champions, continuing to develop uh, that belief in, in what we've been preaching. You know, Tim Priest and I usually get to the game at least three hours ahead of time. You beat us there every single game this year. You go in the, the coach's booth and kind of sit there and talk about what you do so early and why you're at the stadium so early. Well, I, I like to get some quiet moments before the game to rehearse the game plan, to go over the situational play calls, to go over those third and one and fourth and one play calls and red zone calls, and just, again, play the game in my mind before it comes up in, in, in reality. 
So and it's quiet in there, so you just kind of think nobody bothers you. Not at all. I, it's very secluded. I I, I also uh, call my wife to tell her I love her, and then and then uh, and, and then focus on the game plan. Mike, we've heard Butch talk about just the magnitude of this weekend, what a special place Tennessee is. A lot of big-time recruits on campus this week. Just how big was the atmosphere and the environment that you guys played in yesterday? Boy, it was electric, and, and uh, the, the, the fans were our 12th man for us. There, there were times when our defense was on the field and I was on the, the player phone with Justin Worley, and he couldn't hear what I was saying. I'm in the box screaming through the player phone, and, and finally I just had to send him to a headset to talk to him through a headset. So they, they were great, and, and again, it's a great atmosphere, and uh, we need that continued support as we head on through the season. Mike, I thought you called a great game yesterday. I know it's a disappointing ending, but still you saw the progress of your offense in this football team. Absolutely, and I, I appreciate that, but the reality is it was the, the players that executed it and, and the assistant coaches that helped develop the game plan. Thanks for your time today, Coach. Thank you. Coach Mike Bajaki and Tennessee's offensive coordinator, and we'll wrap things up next here on the Butch Jones Show. It's time for the first Tennessee first look, a scouting report and look ahead at the Vols' upcoming opponent. Brought to you by First Tennessee Bank, the official bank of the Vols. Up next for the Tennessee Volunteers, South Carolina. Coach Steve Spurrier brings his Gamecocks to town. Uh, South Carolina on Saturday night held on against Kentucky. That kind of surprised a lot of folks. Surprised a lot of people and continue to trend, Bob. South Carolina really is struggling in the fourth quarter of ball games to close out those games. Couldn't close out this game we used to see highlights of against Georgia. Lost that contest, allowed um, Central Florida, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky all to have huge rallies in the fourth quarter. So that's a point of emphasis for the Gamecocks, and that's got to be something that Tennessee's taking note of as well. But again, South Carolina very much in the race for the SEC East. Very much in the race for the SEC East, but South Carolina's kind of got some issues. Jadavian Clowney didn't play in that win against Kentucky. Surprise coaches by telling them he participated and walked through then did not go in the game coaches you could tell were very upset after the game Steve Spurrier said if he wants to be a part of this team he'll be a part of this team so South Carolina is in, in the race for the East but also has some issues and Tennessee has two weeks to prepare and get healthy and South Carolina's got some banged up quarterbacks too I guess Connor Shaw though did play against Kentucky Shaw did play he came back a little bit ahead of schedule and uh, they're led by Mike Davis there in the backfield he's a, a good running back who never lets the first defender get him down for the most part. So those are going to be keys for Tennessee. So while Tennessee has an open date coming up this Saturday, South Carolina does play at Arkansas. So uh, Tennessee will have a chance to rest some bumps and bruises. And at midseason, usually an open date always comes at a good time. Really good time for Tennessee. The, the Vols need this. They've got several guys that are getting closer and closer to coming back. Jonathan Johnson came back a little bit in the game against Georgia. It'll give him a chance to get healthier. Cody Blank. We're uh, waiting to see what's going to happen with Marlon Lane. Devron Young is out there working, trying to get back ahead of schedule. number of balls need this time to get healed up and get back. One good thing, though, is Pig Howard had that breakout game everyone's been waiting for. Pig Howard had a breakout game and did a lot of good things, had a lot of touches, showed some uh, elusiveness on the perimeter, taking the ball in those jet sweeps. I thought a number of guys stepped up. When you look at three true freshmen and Josh Smith, Marquez North and A.J. Branisell had huge catches for this Tennessee team. Those are all signs of encouragement. And Justin Worley, I thought, played his best game. Magnificent step forward for Justin Worley. Really, his composure and his calm, I thought, were the keys. So Tennessee has an open date. South Carolina comes to town in two weeks. Uh, the start time for the game will probably be announced on Monday, so stay tuned to your Vol Network station to get the start time for that. We can tell you there are tickets available at uttix.com. For John Bryce, for Mike Bajakian, and for Coach Butch Jones, I'm Bob Kessling. We'll see you in two weeks here on the Butch Jones Show. Produced by IMG, the world's premier sports, media, and entertainment company. For more coverage of this week's game, be sure to watch the Vol Network's two-hour game replay. Check local listings. Produced at the Huster Broadcast Center.